What's going on, y'all? Thanks for checking in the Cali's Take. You know what to do if you haven't already. Hit that like, subscribe button. Also hit the notification bell just so you can get the newest and the bonus content first. But hey, let's just go ahead and jump right into what's going on right now. You know, this news seems like it's only getting worse. It doesn't seem like it's getting better. It doesn't seem like it's it's forming or rounding out the way it's supposed to in regards to Paul George. You know, it's a lot of speculation more than answers in this situation. And at this point, I feel like we should just expect the worst out of the Paul George situation. We really should expect the worst because now the reports are coming out that from Sports Illustrated, Brian Windhorst, who's a very credible source, um, just like Adrian Wojnarowski, you know, for ESPN as well, you know, um, is basically saying that it's at the point where more than likely it's probably going to be surgery and it's just a waiting period. You might as well just wait and just expect to hear surgery because apparently there's something going wrong somewhere or there's some discomfort on Paul George's part or it just doesn't seem like it's healing the way they think that it should, you know, in regards to waiting for the reevaluation that was supposed to happen within a couple of weeks or maybe less than a week or so now since it, that was like almost a week or two ago. But that's my point. You know, with Paul George, you know, a lot of people are going to sit here and say, you know, he's not reliable. He's not this. He's not that. And I've I've been on record to say that he's been very unreliable throughout his career in regards to coming up in big games and things like that. You know, but I do hope that, you know, he gets healthy and finds a way to get better, you know, because this team definitely has an opportunity to win a championship. And, you know, he can definitely be a part of something really big if he's able to, you know, stay healthy enough to do so. But this surgery is very, very um inevitable seem like um i hope hopefully there is um a reverse in motion in, in this situation where the opposite happens where he doesn't need surgery and you know he can just you know come back in a few weeks about maybe after all-star break a little bit further than that and just come back and be okay but if he has a surgery then it's definitely over with i mean he's definitely out for the season because that type of surgery takes away all your pretty much most of your mobility in that arm to be able to perform at the high level that he can or is able as is, is capable of doing or you know is as he does so it, it's going to be a really really demoralizing loss if they actually have that happen or if that actually has to happen as far as the surgery but you know it is what it is you know we have to see how it goes but it's really not looking good honestly um clipper nation it's looking like it's more or less leaning towards the surgery side. And um, that's not something that, you know, Clippers Nation or the NBA world wanted to hear because you want to see players healthy and have the opportunity to go out there and display their talents and, you know, be a part of a winning situation, help a team win a championship in which the Clippers definitely have an opportunity to do so. Because just like last year, this year, it's wide open in the West once again. The Lakers are struggling. They haven't really figured their, out their strides yet. Um... The Warriors and Suns are definitely beatable. Um, the Nuggets would be a lot better as well if they get Jamal Murray back. But how long it might take him to get back in the rhythm? Who knows? And I'm not sure if they would beat the Clippers in a seven game series again. I mean, they, they possibly could because they do have a really good team. But they are missing a few pieces from that team that actually helped them win that year. Uh, Jerry and Grant, I think, is one of those pieces. So, you know, it's a different looking Nuggets team in some ways. But, you know, at the same time, it, it, the, the West is wide open. And like I said, if they're missing Paul George, you know, the only thing the, the Clippers Nation could do if if this happens, if if Paul George doesn't come back because he has to get the surgery, um, just have to hope that Kawhi Leonard still wants to come back. You know, and I don't know of how how that would play out. I don't know if. You know, Kawhi would even be comfortable going out there risking his ACL, you know, and, you know, he doesn't have a partner in crime because that's the reason why he came to L.A. to have a partner in crime, you know, to try to win, not to go out there and, you know, carry a team, put a team on his back the way he did in Toronto because it took a lot out of him, took a lot of years off his knees and his body. And um, he went through it. He did it, you know, and um, he proved that he can carry a team on his own. You know, but um, the notion is not to keep doing that because all these other teams have two or three superstars or two or three major players they can go to 
and you would only have one superstar player you can go to and a bunch of role players. And don't get me wrong, I think if Kawhi did come back, even without Paul George, I still think they can, you know, win uh, a couple of rounds in the playoffs and possibly sneak by somebody and possibly make the finals, you know, even though these other teams got more, you know, superstar power. But I, that's how much I believe in Kawhi Leonard. I definitely believe he works well alone. Um, I definitely believe he can work with a superstar, but the superstar really has to complement you know, uh, him in ways where, you know, he he might not be as good at. Like, I mean, he can play with another superstar to me. I just feel like that superstar has to be able to assist the ball, you know, even in, in regards to Kawhi not being a good a good assist man. That's one part of his game that really isn't, you know, just like his scoring or his defense, even though it's getting better. But um, I did think Paul George was rounding into shape, you know, and he was getting used to playing with Paul George. Uh, even though they haven't played awfully, you know, that much. But I, I think he likes Paul George. I think I feel like he always liked Paul George. And I feel like he kind of liked Paul George's game, too, because it mimics his some. So I felt like they were starting to gel a little bit. You know, I was watching them last year play a little, even though there were some games where they, you know, um, fell um, short. But, I mean, they still... You know, in the games last year, they, they still played well, a lot of games together. And I felt like their chemistry was starting to build, you know, but then the injury happens in the playoffs. Now this year, Kawhi is out. Now it looks like Paul George might be out. It just seemed like they never really had a chance to grow on it, one another on on the court, you know, play enough on the court to really build that chemistry and that camaraderie that those two players need to have in order for the team to get further ahead in the playoffs. But I mean, just off town alone, they can win. If, if both of them on the floor anyway, if you ask me. But this is my point. Um, I'm not sure if Kawhi would come back. But if he does, like I said, I still think they can, you know, make some noise in the West. It would be really, really tough, though, because you're asking him to come back off an ACL injury and carry a team basically to the finals if he's able to do that. Now, when he did it on Toronto, he wasn't hurt. You know, he wasn't he didn't have no ACL tear anyway. So, I mean, it was a lot of different circumstance, a lot of different situation. And um, like I said, the window for the Clippers is closing, man. And, you know, you have to hope it's Clippers Nation that this injury with Paul George gets reversed, you know, where he can just rest it out, wait about three, four to three to five more weeks and, you know, give it a shot and go out there and play. But I kind of knew from, I think, what was it, about a month ago, he came back for like one or two games and then re-aggravated it. I kind of knew from there it was going to be a little bit more, it might be a little bit more serious than what even Clippers Nation put out or was putting on about the situation. So I can't really say it, it surprises me, but at the same time, you know, it's definitely not a good, it's not good at all for Clippers Nation because like I said, he's a big part of what they're trying to do. And, you know, they need, they need him there. You know, honestly, I mean, I feel like, you know, Kawhi can do a lot of things by himself, but I feel like Kawhi would like to have help in doing it now because he know he's he's done did a lot. He's put a team on his back before, carried them. And it's time to get some help because the NBA is just changing. It's not about one player going out there dominating like that. And I'm not saying Kawhi can't do it, but you got to have help now because all these teams got a big three. I mean, even even a team like the Bucks, you, you might not consider them having a big three, but they have a mini big three because Giannis, Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton, all of them can score. All of them can, you know, defend, you know, pretty decently or, or fairly well to, to, to decent to good. You know what I'm saying? So that is a combination that a lot of teams have to deal with. And, you know, it's like you look at the Nets. If the Lakers found a way to get together, they got a big three. You know, you can probably say the same thing about Phoenix. You know, um, DeAndre Aiden, uh, CP3, and of course, um, Booker. You see what I'm saying? So you look at the teams around the league, you know, you definitely need that second guy or that third guy, you know what I'm saying, just to, you know, stay afloat, you know. And I don't know if Kawhi would come back looking at the circumstances of other teams around him that have way more talent, how much energy he would have to put out just to help the team win in the first round, almost like he did last year. And you saw what happened there. He ended up getting hurt because he put so much energy out, probably, you know, definitely fatigued like everybody else. And it just, you know, came back to it. It, it, it just, I guess it just took a toll on his body. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I don't know. It's really hard to say. Things are up in the air right now with the Clippers. I mean, they're currently sitting in the ninth seed. 
Paul George's situation doesn't look like it's getting any better. Looks like he's going to have to have surgery. You don't know whether Kawhi is coming back. And if he does, how much can he contribute? Um, will he be 100% himself mentally, physically, all that? I believe he would, but I don't know if he would come back without Paul George because, like I said, it's championship or bust with this team regardless. So if he steps on the floor, you know, he has to understand whether they win it or not, you know, he was there. So, I mean, that's how most people are going to look at it. Me personally, I would look at it like, you know, if Kawhi came back without PG and he made it, you know, uh, to the conference finals or something like that, you know, or something like that, trying to, you know, keep himself healthy and carry this team. I, I would be proud of Kawhi Leonard just as always, I guess, because he's my favorite player. But I mean, that's a lot to ask a guy to come off an ACL injury and carry a team in the playoffs all the way through on one leg, basically, and get him to a championship and win it. I mean, that that's that, like I said, that's even more difficult than what he did in Toronto. In Toronto, at least he was healthy going into the season. You know, no worries. Everything was fine. Start a new situation. You know, it was a lot different situation. So it would be tough if he did that. But I mean, you know, hey, uh, we'll have to see how that goes or what he decides to do. But um, definitely, I hope that Paul George, you know, injury gets better where it, um, like I said, he'll be able to just come back with a few weeks you know um i really hate to hear reports from sports illustrated brian windhorse or adrian wojanowski because they always seem to usually be right um they're never really too far off from the truth in regards to what they hear from their sources their sources are definitely credible have been for years which is the reason why they're still with you know espn and, and the rest of them because they definitely you know bring you news that have value and um reading that definitely didn't sit well because it's like man you know the Clippers definitely have an opportunity to win but the opportunity is only going to be there depending on how healthy you are and had this team has been dealing with health all year basically last year from the playoffs even the year before that when Paul George when when Kawhi started this thing um the Kawhi town thing in LA Paul George is out what was it most of that season was sh shoulder injuries from his shoulder surgery he had or something like that so I mean it's always been an injury Serge Ibaka was out for like one or two seasons seemed like you know they just never seem like they all can be on the court at the same time and it's a shame because I think if this team was all on the court at the same time I definitely think it would be tough for any team in the West to knock them off. I really do because it would be hard for you to tell me that you could knock off a team in a seven game series with Kawhi, PG, Serge Ibaka, uh, Marcus Morris, um, Reggie Jackson, you know, um, they, they, they got some really good pieces and their bench, you know, with Terrence Mann and Luke Kennard, they've been a surprise to, Cl to Clippers Nation these last couple seasons probably but they've been playing really well and they've accepted their role and what they do and it would just be a, a, a shame to not see this team all be put together because I mean even in bits and pieces they almost made a finals last year without Kawhi Leonard you know what I'm saying so it's like you see the talent on this team and how they gel together and how they play with resiliency but you can only do that so much based upon how the injury gods are you know predicting your future but hopefully like i said um paul george gets better um I, i'm not sure how it's gonna go because like i said a ucl is a rare injury and like i said it requires tommy john surgery if it has to be done and i'm telling you any baseball player if you ever looked at baseball maybe you haven't but growing up i've looked at it i've seen many pitchers throw their arm out and have elbow surgery on their UCL and that Tommy John Tommy, Tommy John surgery basically changes them as a player as soon as they come back and it, and it takes a, a toll on them mentally because it's like you can't throw as hard the velocity and you're trying to think how you do, how you shoot or how you throw or whatever the case may be and it throws off your rhythm a lot when you're thinking too much rather than going out there letting it happen and uh, just basically letting it go so I just want to see how this situation pans out right now definitely not looking good but hopefully I'll be to give you better news going forward about the Paul George situation and about the Kawhi Leonard situation as well maybe on his return and how everything's going to play out but um, as of right now it's just a waiting game but um, definitely not looking good Clippers Nation but hey that's my take on the situation leave any comments in the comment section as always and hey Cali out